G'day guys, here's a compilation of all the videos I've done with the pie maker. I've split it up into savoury and then sweet and I've also put the timestamps in the description box. So if there's a particular recipe you just want to go to, go down there and click on that. You'll go straight to that recipe. Give this video a thumbs up if that's helpful. Let's get into it. The next meal I'm excited to share with you because this is what we use the power maker for the most and that's eggs. Today I'm going to be showing you how I do bacon and eggs but we do just do eggs with a runny yolk which is just delicious. First into a cold pie maker I'm putting bacon down the bottom and then I'm cracking two eggs and then on the microwave I'm putting it for six minutes. So if I didn't have the bacon, I'd just do it for four minutes to get the runny egg. I still get a runny egg here with six minutes and the bacon. We've also done tomatoes with a little bit of mixed herb seasoning on them, and delicious, as well as mushrooms. I've tried it with spinach as well, and spinach goes a little bit crispy, but it's still nice, like it doesn't burn. It's such a simple and fast way to start the day with eggs, and it keeps me fuller for longer. And the cleanup is so easy. I just wipe down the pie maker while it's still warm with a damp cloth. Our next meal is zucchini slice. I often do this in the oven, but personally from now on, I'll be doing it in the pie maker because I prefer the sizes and the surrounding crunch that you get from doing it in the pie maker rather than doing it in the oven where I often found the center was always a bit more gooey than the outsides. So starting off, what I'm doing is chopping up one onion and then three pieces of bacon, just chopping them up into tiny pieces before putting them aside. Then I'm breaking up five eggs, putting them into a bowl before mixing it all together with a fork till it's completely combined. The egg and the yolk are as one. So giving it a really good whisk with a fork. Then I sifted one and a quarter cups of self-raising flour into the egg mixture. I'm using a Tupperware sifter that we were given as an engagement present. Then I like to mix that all together before adding in one tablespoon of vegetable oil. Then I'm adding in the bacon, onion, one cup of light tasty cheese before grating one carrot and then I was going to do three zucchinis. I've got three zucchinis there, but I thought I had enough after two. So I'm just grating two zucchinis. And this is what takes the time grating these. Then I mixed it all together and using a spoon, put it into the pie holes and I just filled it to the top. I didn't overfill these ones. Then I put them on for eight minutes and like I do with the donuts, the last two minutes I turned them over. And there they are, that's how they look, a delicious lunch option. Then I spoon them out and then keep repeating this process. All up, I ended up with 16 zucchini slices and it was still quicker than putting it in the oven, waiting for the oven to preheat and then cook it. So I'll definitely be doing it again in the pie maker. 
and they're great for lunches is bolognese pies so instead of putting spaghetti with my spaghetti bolognese i'm going to put it in a pie we're trying to stretch our meat at the moment so these 800 grams of mince we're going to use for three different recipes i'm going to use them to make six beef burgers sausage rolls as well as this bolognese so to bulk up the bolognese i'm going to be using butter beans so when i do this i like to use big red tomato soup and some crushed tomatoes first off i like to chop up an onion i like to do it as finely as i can and instead of using puff pastry for the pie what i'm going to be using is these multi-grain wraps so I've heated some oil on the stove, and then I'm adding in the mince and the onion, and I'm gonna cook that until the mince is brown. If it was a three grain mince, I'd take it out of the saucepan and drain it through a colander to get off that excess fat, because it's premium mince that it's gonna leave as is, and add in the rinsed butter beans. Then I'm gonna add in this salt reduced tomato soup, which I love, it's what really gives it the flavor in my bolognese's, and a can of crushed tomatoes. Sometimes I use the ones that have got basil already flavored, but this is just what we had in the cupboard. And then I'm adding in some mixed herbs. I don't have any fresh herbs at the moment. I do really love to put in fresh basil, um, but I don't have any at the moment. Once it's all mixed together, then I try a little bit and make sure it's the flavor I want. If not, I add more. While that is simmering over on the stove, I'm gonna cut out the bases for the pie maker. So I do this really roughly. I'm not too worried about getting exact. So just using the pie cutter, I make rough circles around it. First, I'm gonna put some cheese down at the bottom of the wraps before adding in the bolognese mixture. And then adding a little bit more cheese on the top. Before covering the top of them with the off cuts of the wrap. I'm doing this all with a cold pie maker. So I'm gonna turn the pie maker on and then put five minutes on the microwave. I was happy with this. The top was slightly crunchy, the bases weren't crunchy, so it could have gone in a bit longer. If I'd wanted it to be crunchy throughout, I would have put it in a bit longer, but I was really happy with how it was. I enjoyed this as an alternative to having pasta, and it was far healthier than using puff pastry. Next, we're making pizza balls, so I decided to try out the two ingredient dough, which is two parts flour to one part yogurt. So I did two cups of self-raising flour and then one cup of Greek light yogurt. You'll notice with the pie maker recipes, if there's flour, then we use the sifter. If my daughter's around, she just goes and gets it out. She loves sifting flour. And yes, it's definitely more messy cooking with kids, but it's so fun and it's a great activity to be able to do together. And hey, there's more flour on the bench, which I'm gonna need later. So it's a lot of fun to do together. And then she started mixing it together. As we were mixing it together, I thought it was a little bit too dry. So I actually asked Dave to just put some more yogurt on for me. As you can see here, he just added a big spoonful, but it just wasn't coming together. So then I continued to knead it until it was into a nice ball. So in our pizza pockets or pizza balls, we've got some pasta sauce, ham, capsicum, mushroom, onion, parmesan cheese, and light tasty cheese. So after putting flour over the rolling pin so that it didn't stick to the dough, then I rolled some out, grabbed the dough so that it kind of would be like a bowl in my hand. Then I put the pasta sauce on and the toppings that I wanted. I can't believe with the first one, I actually forgot to put cheese, but anyway. And then I closed it together at the top and then twisted so that I took off the excess dough. But to be honest, I still found that this was really quite doughy, but we, when we have pizza, have super thin pizza bases. So that could be why too. Everyone in the family was pretty excited about what I was making, so Dave had a go making one. And 
and my two and a half year old daughter did as well. She got to choose what she wanted on her little pizza pocket. Then I put in the pie maker cold and then put five minutes on the clock. Look at one of them, it ends up looking a bit like a pie. And went another minute and then I took them out. The cheese was melted. The first lot was a bit doughy so Dave rolled it out a lot thinner and then used the cutter that comes with the pie maker to cut the circle. Then we put it on for five minutes, flipped them over and then put them on for another two minutes. As you can see these guys needed a little bit longer. They needed a little bit longer because they weren't as big so they weren't touching all the sides of the pie maker. So what I learnt from this, the second ones were definitely better, they were thinner, they weren't as doughy. That was the first time I'd made the dough like that and it did turn out really well and Dave said he'd be really happy to have these at work because they don't make a mess and he can eat them on the run. Next we're having these chicken Kievs. These were delicious and so inexpensive compared to the $5 butcher chicken Kievs. And I like how I can limit how much salt we put in it. So first off, what I'm doing here is I'm measuring 75 grams of butter. Ideally, if I had have had this a bit softer, it would have been easier to work with. Then I'm adding in two teaspoons of crushed garlic, then three shakes of this roast vegetable seasoning. I love this seasoning on our roast vegetables, so I thought it'd be really nice in the Kiev. And then a sprinkle of parsley leaves. And then what I did is mix it all together. And this is where I discovered that the butter was probably just a bit too hard. So I got a bit of a workout doing it. Next time I'd get the butter out earlier and just sit it on the bench for a bit before trying to make the garlic butter. Then using some cling wrap, I put that on the bench and then put the butter in it. Now it's really important to freeze the butter for at least 30 minutes minimum because otherwise it's going to leak out straight away from your chicken Kiev balls. So it's important that it's frozen so it stays in the center of the chicken Kiev. So I tried to get this nice and long and thin because I'm going to be cutting it into eight discs. A little excess garlic juice there. Next I'm going to do the breadcrumbs. It's a cup of breadcrumbs to two tablespoons of oil. I couldn't find our tablespoon measurement so I'm using the half tablespoon. That's why I'm doing four. Then I mix that all together and set it aside. Then I'm using some chicken breast mince. This is the first time I've ever used chicken mince actually. So I put that into the bowl and then cracked an egg in and mixed it all together. I didn't add any other seasoning here. A few of the different recipes I had a look at, people were adding more salt and pepper. I didn't want to, I just left it like this. Once it was all combined, then I put some gloves on because I've got a toddler, so I just didn't want to have chicken on my hands if I needed to leave what I was doing to go help them out. So here I am making eight balls. They started off really small and got bigger as I went, I must admit. I don't need to be perfect here, and then I put them in the fridge. I always love to have potato with my chicken Kiev so that the garlic butter can ooze all over the potato. So here I am cutting the skin off a sweet potato before chopping it up into small pieces and putting it in a pot on the stove. And I added in three cups of corn as well. So then after 30 minutes I went and removed the garlic butter, chopped it into eight slices squashed down one of those balls, put it in the middle and then wrapped it around. And this is it's really important to try and get the butter as central as possible before putting it into the breadcrumbs until it was completely covered and then putting it into the pie maker. And then I continued that same process for the four of them. And turning it on. Then five minutes were put on the clock 
and then I continue to do the rest of the other balls. Since I've filmed this video, we've had chicken Kievs again because the chicken mince was on special if you bought two. Some things we're going to do differently next time, get the garlic butter done earlier in the day so that it's done and ready to go. And I'd even think of doing the chicken balls earlier in the day, cover with glad wrap and put it in the fridge. So just before we're about to eat, getting it out and combining it all together. So after five minutes, I turned each Kiev over and went another five minutes. The first time I did this, I think garlic butter came out of one, but the second time I did it, the garlic butter came out of three of them. So then when we're actually eating it, it was a lot drier. The first ones were definitely better. We'll definitely be having this again. It's such a budget friendly way to have chicken Kievs for the family. The first time we had it, we ate all eight balls in one meal, but the next time we had it, we just ate five. Dave and I had two and our daughter had one. Great sizes for kids. The next recipe is sweet potato hash browns. So using a sweet potato, I think this one was about 680 grams because the recipe actually said 750, but I didn't have enough, but I went with what I had. I cut off all the skin from the sweet potato and then I chopped it into big chunks because I thought, why not use my food processor? I've got it. The food processor worked pretty well. With these excess bits, I actually just kept them and did a hash brown with just them in it, and they tasted delicious. They were really good. So then I tipped out all the grated sweet potato from the food processor onto a clean tea towel, rolled it up, and wringed out as much of the liquid as I could. Then I added in a cup of onions. Now these onions were frozen. A couple of weeks ago, I tried doing a bit of meal prep. And so I cut up one kilo worth of onions and I've just been keeping them in the freezer. So it makes it so much quicker when I'm gonna make something with onion because the onion's already chopped up. <laughs> Unfortunately, this recipe actually said that I needed to grate the onion, but I didn't have any onions that I could grate. So I had to use the chopped ones, but that was fine. It was all good. And then I decided to season with this roast vegetable seasoning because I love it. I really love the flavor from it rather than just doing plain salt and pepper. In the recipe, it actually suggested this perfect basis cheese. But basically what I didn't realize is it's just made of cheddar, mozzie and parmesan all put together. So next time I make this, I'm not going to bother buying the packet. I'll just buy what I want and I can mix the two if I want parmesan and mozzie. So I put it on for eight minutes and then I flipped it over and I put it on again for another minute and then I got it out. Basically with all the recipes I do, I always put it in a cold pie maker. I did the same again with the next one. However, it fell apart a lot more. I reckon I needed to squish more into each hole. I also think the onions being frozen affected it as well. Still really delicious though. I'm excited to share with you these butter chicken pies. They were absolutely delicious. I must admit, I think we had two or three each as soon as they were made. They were just so good. Maybe that's why I've waited so long to do a puff pastry pie because I knew they were going to be delicious and I knew I was going to eat a lot of them quickly. So for this, I'm using Pampers Puff Pastry. I bought this from Coles when it was on special, as well as their mixed vegetables that are $1.60 and they contain broccoli and cauliflower stalks, as well as peas and carrot. And I used about 200 grams of them, as well as this Passage to India butter chicken. It said to use a kilo of meat or vegetables. I ended up using 800 grams of chicken thighs and 200 grams of mixed vegetables. I wanted to add in the mixed vegetables right from the start so that we kind of know, especially my two and a half year old toddler, that with pies, veggies just come with it. So on the stove, I heated up some olive oil in the frying pan before adding in the chicken thighs. As well as the mixed vegetables. I cooked the chicken and the vegetables until the outside of the chicken was brown 
before adding in the butter chicken sauce and then I let it simmer for 20 minutes as per the instructions so that the chicken and the vegetables would really have soaked in that butter chicken flavoring. I just regularly gave it a mix to make sure that it didn't get stuck to the bottom. While that was simmering away, I had three sheets of puff pastry and just using the pie cutter, I twisted around and put each pie piece into the pie maker. So the wider bit is used for the bottom and then the smaller bit is used for the lid. I certainly didn't make this look easy, but it was the first time I did it and I got quicker and better each time. And then I cut the lids as well. So I ended up using one sheet of pastry for the bottoms and one sheet of pastry just for the lids um, but like i said i only got three out because i thought the next lot i'll do i'll use because we got a total of eight pies i'll use the bases i'll use the fresh bit of puff pastry that hadn't been used and then i'll just use the off cuts for the other ones so when i was filling the pies i filled them about halfway and then I put the lids on and I just pushed them down so that the ridges on the edge really showed through. And I also made sure here that they weren't touching. So I just separated them so that they weren't touching. And this was all going into a cold pie maker. And then I put seven minutes on the microwave, crossed my fingers and hoped that it'd turn out well. And then at seven minutes, I opened them and I couldn't believe how good they looked. Talk about beginner's luck. Then for the next lot, I just used the off cuts for the lid, like I said. We just tried to cover it so there weren't any gaps. I did turn the pie maker off while I was doing this, but obviously it was still warm from the first ones because the results are very different for these second ones. They came out looking really different. I even did a little C for the chicken. So this was our leftover pastry. What do you do with your leftover pastry? I'd love to know in the comments. So isn't this interesting? The tops are not as puffed and golden as the other ones. And I put them in for the same amount of time. They went in for seven minutes. So I closed the lid, put them in for another minute. And the only one that came out really well was that back right one. It turned out well. I was trying to think what happened and I reckon maybe because they were pieces of pastry rather than a complete one when they were cooking there was air escaping so they didn't rise up to the top of the pie maker so then they didn't get that golden crispy feel what do you reckon okay so the first lunch meal is Vegemite scrolls so to make this I grabbed out the puff pastry probably for about five or ten minutes or so just so it was thawed from the freezer and then some Vegemite and some tasty cheese with the Vegemite, I'm applying about a spoonful and just covering the puff pastry. Now, I actually can't stand Vegemite. So I asked my hubby whether this was too much Vegemite. He did say when I was applying it, that he was thinking, crikey, that's going to be strong. It was okay. He said he wouldn't have wanted any more. And then I put a cup of cheese on. And then I rolled it all up, cut it in half, and then cut one half in half again. I put them into a cold pie maker and put them on for five minutes. After five minutes, I check them and then I put them on again for another three minutes. Then I flip them over and put them on for 10 more minutes. While that was cooking away, I made a ham and cheese scroll. So just four pieces of ham and one cup of the light tasty cheese, just sprinkled all over. And then I rolled this up. This one, I just made three cuts in it. So I had four pieces. There's the Vegemite scrolls done and the pastry's got a bit of a golden color. So I'm gonna take those out. So I'm gonna put the ham and cheese scrolls on for 10 minutes. I decided to check them at two minutes to go. I was happy with that. So I just turned them over and then I put them on for another six minutes. Something I've really noticed with the pie maker is when you're doing your second and third batch, the pie maker is already warm. So I don't need to cook it for as long. 
So these scrolls are definitely bigger because I didn't cut them as small, but the puff pastry is far more golden. So that was with eight minutes flipping over and then six minutes. And then I had those two pieces of the Vegemite scroll still not done. So I just chucked them in the front of the pie maker, put it on for eight minutes, turned them over and then a further six minutes. Now I did end up eating one of these Vegemite scrolls because I do feel like it's important to eat what I make. Um, but like I said, I don't like Vegemite. So the puff pastry was good, but hey, I prefer the ham and cheese scrolls and that's what I'll do for me in the future. However, my hubby really enjoyed the Vegemite scrolls and said it actually wasn't too much Vegemite. He was a bit concerned when I was putting it on and my daughter enjoyed both of them. Since this video, we've actually done it again, ham and cheese scrolls. We've also done cheese, bacon and vegetables. The $1.60 packet of vegetables from Coles. Put a photo here so you know what I'm talking about. And this was really delicious and a bit of a sneaky way to get some veggies into us. The beef burritos. Now the crunch from these tortillas being toasted rather than just wrapped together was delicious. These are the items I used and I first started off by chopping up the onion until it was in fine pieces. If I did my time again, I would have chopped it even finer. Once it was all chopped, then I put it in a frying pan with a little bit of oil down the bottom and then added in the mince until the mince was brown and the onion was cooked, not crunchy. Then I just used some Mexican seasoning that I bought from Coles for $1.25 and then added in a cup of water. I mixed that all together so that all the meat was covered and then allowed that to simmer for a few minutes or until all the water was gone. Then using a pack of 10 tortillas, I used the pie maker cutter that came with it. Using the base part, I just put the tortilla top and spun it around. I didn't bother getting too precise. I mean, I could have flipped it over and used a knife to cut around to get it exact. It didn't matter. I went back to the stove, mixed the mince, and then I added in some corn after I'd rinsed it. And then I mixed that all together. I don't normally put corn in my burritos, but it was delicious. It was really good. I'll definitely do that again. It's just an easy way to get more vegetables into our diet. Then I put the tortillas into the pie maker. The pie maker's cold. It's not even plugged in yet. Then at the bottom, I put in these refried beans and just coated the bottom of each tortillas until it was covered. We don't normally have refried beans. And to be honest, I found it really salty. Um, so salty that looking at the ingredients on the back, which says pinto beans and pink beans and otherwise water and salt. I think next time we're going to have a go at just making it ourselves, just squashing some beans. <laughs> then I spooned in the minced corn and onion mixture and the weight of it pushed tortillas down into the pie holders more. Then I grabbed this chunky salsa from our freezer and just scooped a bit of that on each one. Then I covered each one with some light, tasty cheese. Then using my scrap pieces of tortillas, I just layered them on top. Then I plugged it in, turned on the pie maker and set it for six minutes, just enough for the cheese to melt. Then I scooped it out with a spatula and we ate it like this. We didn't actually bother putting any lettuce or anything. Next time we do lettuce, avocado, and if we had visitors, we'd do sour cream pumpkin puffs so super simple as you can see there pumpkin eggs chives cheese and self-raising flour so first off one cup of self-raising flour like I just said before everything goes in the sifter if it's got flour And then I'm cutting up this pumpkin. I need two cups of cooled pumpkin and gee, did I get lucky. This worked out to be exactly two cups. While that was boiling on the stove, I chopped up a quarter of a cup of chives. I can't believe I had to buy this from the supermarket. We used to have chives. We're gonna have to get more chives in our garden. And then I'm using a cup of tasty light cheese before we mixed in two eggs. As I was mixing this, I was thinking, oh, this is gonna to be too dry, but it worked out. I've put the recipe in the description box so you can go check it out yourself. But like I said, it had to be cooled. So I just put it on a plate to try and cool it quicker and then mashed it up with a fork.
and then mixed it all together. And as you can see, it worked. It all came together really nicely. And then I put a blob of pumpkin in each pie maker hole. Then put it on for five minutes. I've been using the microwave as a timer and I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier than unlocking your phone and then using it. And then I turned them over and put them on for another two minutes and then they were done. And then the pie maker actually got completely cold because I had to go off and do something else. So this time I put it on for five minutes and flipped them and then four minutes. I've made them again since and the next time I didn't have as much pumpkin. So it had a bit more of a flowery taste. These ones, if you actually do the two cups of pumpkin, are delicious. And as a sneaky treat, I even added a bit of butter to some of them, but you don't need it. Next, I'm making chicken burritos. In our first Kmart Pie Maker Hacks video, I did burritos and I just used some seasoning that I bought at the supermarket. Anyway, Dave had a look online and he thought he'd try one out himself. Um, he altered it so much though. He did teaspoons instead of tablespoons. He did different teaspoon amounts for what the recipe said. So he's really made this his own. It was super spicy. We ended up using about a quarter of a teaspoon to season these burritos. The ingredients he used was chili powder, ground cumin, paprika, onion flakes, garlic powder, and cayenne pepper. I'll leave exactly what Dave did in the description box. So I'm gonna stretch these chicken thighs as well and get three meals out of them. First off, I'm removing the excess fat and some cartilage. While my two-year-old's peeling the onion, I've got some oil heating on the stove and I've put the chicken in and I'm just letting that brown off while I chop up the onion. And then I'm adding that to the chicken. Half a cup of water and the rinsed corn kernels. And then I'm trying the spiciness of it. Like I said, I ended up using a quarter of a teaspoon of that burrito seasoning. <laughs> that was enough. Then into a cold pie maker, I'm putting these tortillas. I'm just roughly tearing around the pie maker and putting them in. And then adding in the chicken, onion and corn filling, topping with some salsa. This is a brand new jar. Once I finish with it, I like to store it in the freezer. It just saves it going moldy and then cheese on top. and cover with tortillas. Then I turn the pie maker on and I'm putting it on for six minutes. This is really nice and crunchy. So what I couldn't remove with the spatula, I just used some scissors to separate the two of them. These were delicious and not too salty. That was my complaint regarding the last burritos we made with the seasoning that I used and the refried beans. It was too salty, whereas this one wasn't. This was really, really nice. We'll definitely be having this again. It's a really nice way to have burritos and the tortillas. Mine actually taste better toasted. And last, I'm super excited to share these snow cakes. Now the reason they're green is because that's the color my daughter chose. So all you're gonna need is a packet mix. This is 75 cents from Coles and 250 mils of Sprite. So first we poured in the cake mix and then we gently poured in the Sprite. You don't want it to go too crazy with bubbles, but obviously it bubbles a little bit. And I didn't pour it all in. I thought that was enough and then I mixed it around, just gently, just folding it in. Just folding it in because the bubble is what aerates it and gives it a real fluffy taste. Hence the name Snow Cakes. After we'd both had a go mixing it, I decided that was enough and there was about 40 mils or so left of the Sprite that we didn't end up using. We didn't need to. Then, like I said, I asked my daughter what color she wanted to make it and we made it green. I put two spoons into the pie maker and I was a bit apprehensive about this. Would this work? Wouldn't it? As I've attempted to make raspberry muffins in the pie maker and it was a disaster. The outside was brown and the inside still wasn't cooked. Whereas these, I used a skewer and they were perfect. So I put them on for seven minutes and then I check them with a skewer and you can also just press on them with your finger and see if they bounce back. And 
and then I repeated the same for the next one and these were delicious. So we had them with blueberry jam and cream. Totally recommend them and they worked out really, really well. I hope you enjoyed these meal ideas as well as this absolutely delicious dessert. So the first one I've got for you is chocolate molten puddings and it is absolutely delicious. It is restaurant worthy. So first off, I'm going to use 180 grams of old gold chocolate. Thankfully it was on special this week because I ended up using the whole lot. And then I chopped up 150 grams of unsalted butter and I put them both into a saucepan. I did end up breaking up the chocolate a bit so it was in smaller pieces so that it was easier to melt. But I just kept the butter in a big clump and that was fine. And then I put it on the stove and I put it on medium heat just so it slowly began melting and every now and then I'd come over and mix it. So while that was happening on the stove, I put four eggs into a glass um, and then mixed it with a fork. Then my two and a half year old daughter grabbed a bowl. So into the bowl, we're putting in a third of a cup of plain flour and half a cup of caster sugar. Now I could have just poured this straight into the saucepan because I end up just pouring the whole bowl full of stuff into the saucepan, but that's cooking with toddlers, isn't it? Once the chocolate and butter was all melted, then added in the flour, sugar and eggs and whisked it all together. It actually combines really quickly. It didn't take too long at all. Then the recipe I was following said a third so I filled each pie hole up to a third of the way um, and put it on for three minutes so I was aiming to have the top part of the pudding crusty I put it on for another minute because the top wasn't crusty because they were so narrow when I actually got them out they weren't gooey at all which is the whole point of the pudding so I thought no I actually just need more mixture in there if I had more mixture then it'd be able to get gooey in the middle and crusty on the top and kind of firm on the bottom. It won't get crusty on the bottom. Anyway, so the next one I did, I filled up to the top of the pie rim and these worked perfectly. So that's my tip, you know, fill up to the top of the rim, not overflowing, just the top of the rim and wait until the crust comes onto the top, you know, and then take that out. So that'll occur at about three or four minutes. Another thing that's important to remember is once the pie maker is hot, each subsequent lot of puddings will require less time. That's really important because when I'm using the pie maker, I don't preheat the pie maker. It, the first one always tends to take longer, but then after that, I take a minute off normally. So these ones after three minutes were perfect. They just had that gooey lava like center. I actually ended up Googling what molten meant. Um, and it means liquefied by high heat. So it's that gooey lava-like center that you get from these puddings. And I served it with fresh raspberries and ice cream. Absolutely delicious. Look, I'd pay $14 for this if I was out and about. So if you're a chocolate lover, you will love this. As a side note, I reread the recipe after I did this because, I, like I said, it said only to put a third in. And no, actually the recipe said a third cupfuls of the chocolate mixture which I measured a third of a cup with water and it filled to the top of the pie maker so that's what it is but I suppose you know if you're using a Breville pie maker or a Sunbeam pie maker it would be different but these hacks are for the Kmart pie maker so if you just fill it right to the top it'll be perfect. We love banana cake in our house. So this recipe we've used for a couple of years now in the oven. So I thought I'd give it a try in the actual pie maker and I'm so happy with how they turned out. So over on the stove, I've got 125 grams of butter, half a cup of sugar, as well as just a dribble of vanilla essence. And then on low heat, I'm just gonna let that butter melt. Alrighty, if you don't like ookie bananas, then 
turn away now. So these bananas have been in the freezer for a while and I can't stand ookie bananas. So it took a lot for me to actually do this, I must admit. So two bananas just in a bowl and then I just mashed them with a fork. Then I added one egg and mix that around before using one and a half cup of self-raising flour and then a quarter of a cup of milk. I'm putting the flour in the sifter because my two and a half year old daughter's here and she really likes sifting. So she's going to do that. While she's doing that, I'm just going to add a quarter of a cup of full cream milk. By the time we've done all this, the butter's melted, so I just mix that together with a wooden spoon before coming over and pouring that into the flour mixture and then mixing it all together. I gave it a really, really good mix. I tried to get as many of those lumps out as possible and as many of those banana pieces to be as squashed as possible too. Then into a cold pie maker I put about a dollop or so up to about halfway in each one of the banana mixture. I plugged it in, put it on for eight minutes and at eight minutes this is how they looked thought oh no what's happened I just checked to make sure that they were cooked inside and they were definitely cooked inside but I was a little bit disappointed with the brownness however when we we're eating them this was actually really nice it wasn't burnt it just gave a really kind of crunchy feel and I enjoyed it more than just having the log banana bread like we normally do having these banana muffins so into a warm pie maker because I had turned it off at the eight minute mark I put in some more banana mixture up to halfway and this time I just put it on for six minutes and this is how they look after six minutes. I ended up getting 15 banana cakes and we really enjoy having them with a little bit of butter on as well. I'm making apple pies with puff pastry not short crust pastry. So first off I'm cutting up one kilogram of Granny Smith apples. I'm going to keep the skin on. I'm just going to decor them and slice them up. And don't worry I'm not going to put video clips here as I cut up a kilo worth of apples. <laughs> I ended up having to go to a larger saucepan and then I put in a third of a cup of caster sugar and a quarter of a cup of water. Put that onto the stove on low heat and then I continued to mix it for around two to three minutes until I thought the sugar had kind of dissolved. And then I let it simmer for another three or so minutes. And then I thought, do you know what? I'm going to add some cinnamon. So I added in a ton of cinnamon um, and I'm so glad I did. It was delicious. Apple and cinnamon pies. So good. I cooked it until I could put my wooden spoon through the apple slice and it split in two. And then I let it sit until it was completely cool. At a minimum, the recipe said to wait 30 minutes, but I got doing other things. So I came back hours later to actually make the apple pies. And then I cut the puff pastry. And finally, I thought there's got to be an easier way to do this. The hack I'd like to share with you is you cut out each one and then you lift up the base and the circles are left behind. Made sure the apple pieces didn't come above the top of the pie because I didn't want it to explode in the pie maker. After I'd made eight pies, so used four sheets of the puff pastry, all the leftovers, I decided to try and roll them out this time. So I rolled them out. They were a bit thicker than the other ones, just because I didn't roll them out as thin, which you can see here. And I managed to get a further three pies out of this. 
However, they didn't cook as well in the pie maker. If you see here, they actually raised up a little bit. And I did have some leftover apple as well. When I came to get these three pies out, the pie maker wasn't locked into place. So I think that's why that front right one doesn't have a nice top. I cooked them for seven minutes in the pie maker and they were delicious. So we ate two of them and I'm actually freezing the rest of them. So to reheat them, I'm planning on just putting them back in the pie maker until they warm up. Pikelet, so I just use our standard pancake recipe for this. So a cup of plain flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one egg and one cup of milk. Then my daughter and I mixed it until there were no lumps. And then into a cold pie maker, I scooped in mixture until it probably went to a third of the way up in the pie hole. This is the first time that I'm actually gonna cook keeping the lid open. For every other one that I've done, I always close the lid. But this one I thought, well, when you do it on the stove, which I haven't done since I was a kid, um, it's open and you need to see those bubbles. So I put a timer here. Um, and I waited until I could see the bubbles. And as you can see here, the bubbles really started to form. Four and a half minutes. So I took it out, chopped it open to make sure it was cooked and it was, so I removed them all and then I added more in. These ones here went for about four minutes, 15 seconds or so. And as you can see, these rose more than the first ones. And then I thought, Do you know what, let's try what happens if I close the lid. So I closed the lid on the pie maker and this really changed them from pikelets to probably a bit more like muffins, I suppose. And I ended up taking them out about the four minute mark. And this is what they looked like. They were much bigger. So that's the one that had the roof closed and those are the ones that didn't have the roof closed. And then I just served it with strawberry jam. Orange and poppy seed cake. So I bought this packet mix when I bought the brownies packet mix. So it was only $2 and all I had to add was butter, eggs and water. So first off, I just followed the instructions. I emptied the packet mix into a bowl, added in the water as well as the butter and then I cracked the three eggs. Now you think the amount of cooking I have been doing, I'd get better at cracking eggs, but no, I haven't. And then I used the hand mixer for the first minute just to mix everything in on low speed before kicking it up to high speed until it was fully mixed through. I do like to have a little taste when I'm cooking and it was delicious. I checked the ingredients and you know, the number one ingredients is sugar. So no wonder it was so good. As you can see here, the butter actually wasn't soft enough. So I just sat it aside for a bit, went off and did something else and came back when all the butter was softened using a spatula to wipe down the sides. Then I gave it another mix. As you can see, there's no clumps of butter now. And then I just spooned it into each pie hole and I filled up to the top rim. And then I put it on for seven minutes. And then I set the timer for eight minutes. And this is what it looked like after eight minutes. Um, and I just used a skewer to make sure that it came out clean, which it did. So I whipped those out. So for the next two, the pie maker was hot. So I just took 30 seconds off. So each of those was seven and a half minutes and it's brown, but don't worry, it's not burnt. And then I just used the icing that came with the packet to cover it. And it was delicious. This was so good guys. Some chocolate brownies. I've actually never made brownies before. So I grabbed a recipe off the internet, but it had caster sugar. And as you can see, I've used a lot of caster sugar to make these other recipes so we'd run out. So I grabbed this greens packet that we had in the cupboard and it was $2, which I thought was actually a really good price. And I'd have to work out 
with the cost of chocolate making it from scratch if it's actually cheaper to use the greens packet i'm not sure i haven't actually looked into it yet anyway i've got a little bit distracted just ended up following the greens packet which said to use two eggs and 125 grams of melted butter so i just put the butter in a ramekin in the microwave and just put it for 30 second lots it ended up needing only one minute and 10 seconds and then we mixed it all together gave it a really good mix before spooning it into the pie maker oh wow it's a full chocolate melt button there now it's said to use a wooden spoon for those of you out there who are better bakers than me why do you use a wooden spoon i'd love to know in the comments below thank you And then I first put seven minutes on the pie maker, felt the top and it wasn't crunchy. So I put it on for another minute. It was still a little bit squishy. So I put it on for another minute after that. And then I got it out. These brownies were so good. They were gooey in the middle and in the actual packet mix, it actually had chocolate melt. So they melted as well. It was so good. These chocolate profiteroles, or should I say chocolate profiter bowls. So I picked up this White Wings packet mix from Coles when it was on special and I just need to add two eggs and 125 mils or half a cup of water as well as the packet of pastry from White Wings. I put this all into electric beaters and then I just followed their instructions which said low speed for 30 seconds until it was all combined and then increase the speed on high for one minute. Here you can see how the pastry changes with the mixer. Then because I wasn't sure how this was going to work, I just did one in the pie maker. We love profiteroles, so I didn't want the whole bunch to be ruined if it didn't work. <laughs> I was going to risk it. So the rest I did in the oven. Someone might be able to tell me this. Is the difference between a profiterole and a chocolate eclair just a length? A chocolate eclair is longer? I don't know. Can someone tell me? So then I turned on the pie maker for seven minutes. And as you'll see here, what happens as soon as I open it, it deflates. So I put it on for another two minutes and then it was still deflating a bit. It wasn't holding its height. So then I didn't even bother flipping it over. I just closed it again and let it sit in the warm pie maker for three minutes to see if that did anything. So as you can see here, it's pretty flat. I wasn't able to cut it in half to put the custard. And here it is compared to the others, like a massive difference. So I'm grateful that I didn't do the whole lot in the pie maker. But like I said, it's more of a profiter bowl. So instead of putting the custard in it, I put the custard on top and then a dollop of chocolate. It still tasted the same. It definitely was a different texture. I won't be doing profiteroles in the pie maker again, but I thought I'd share it with you because you know, when you're experimenting, not everything turns out right. So we're in this together, guys. Have you tried profiteroles in the pie maker? Here I am just making the custard. So using 200 mils of thickened cream and 100 mils of milk, as well as the custard powder they provide, and then just using a hand mixer to mix it all up. Then using a spatula, I went around the edges to make sure I got all that powder in and mixed through. These were absolutely delicious. Dave actually said he might try making the shoe pastry from scratch. Has anyone else done that? Was it easy? Here's a comparison between the profiterole cooked in the oven and that in the pie maker. As you can see, there is a massive difference between the two of them, but they're both delicious with the yummy custard and chocolate on top. Thank you, Pauline, for suggesting these solo scones. However, I had Sprite at home in the cupboard, so that's what I'm gonna to use to make these. I've definitely heard of lemonade scones before, but I haven't actually made them myself. So starting off with three cups of self-raising flour, 300 mils of thickened cream, and 200 mils of Sprite. That's what I'm gonna be using. So we sifted all the flour, that took a little bit of time, created a well in the middle, and then poured in the cream and then the Sprite. And then using a knife, that's what the recipe said, we folded it in together. Until everything was just combined and then we stopped. Mm -hmm. 
and then I spoon folded it into the pie holes filling up right to the top and then I had some melted butter it was about a tablespoon of melted butter and using a pastry brush I just brushed that on the top then I turned the pie maker on So the first lot went in for eight minutes and then the next lot went in for seven minutes and they had a beautiful crunchy top. These were a great size, these scones, and we put jam and cream on it. Green was my daughter's choice. <laughs> these condensed milk muffins. Now this had a two star review on it and when I read the review they said that after eight minutes it was already burnt and it had stuck to their pie maker like crazy. So what do you think? Will it be a pie maker win or a pie maker fail? So the recipe said to do this in the microwave to put the condensed milk, the butter and the milk. But I thought, no way am I doing that. Knowing my luck, it would explode in the microwave and I'd have a super sticky microwave that I'd have to clean. So I decided to do it on the stove and just do it at a really low heat so that I could keep an eye on it. So while it was doing its thing, I put two cups of flour into a bowl as well as two teaspoons of baking powder. mixed it together with a whisk, went back over to the stove to check to see how it was going. Um, obviously I had it on super low so I turned it up a little bit and then I decided that I'd make this apple muffins so I chopped up one apple into really thin slices. <music> Went back to check on the butter and it was coming along nicely. Once it was completely melted, then I poured it in with the flour and mixed that together. I just used the spatula that I'd used for the saucepan. I added in the two eggs and combined it all together using the whisk before adding in the chopped up apple. Now because that review said about the stickiness in the pie maker, I thought, oh, I've got some cupcake patty pans. I'll just use those. I popped them into the pie maker and then I popped the mixture on top and I filled it up to the top. So as you can see here, it's pretty high. And then I put it on for seven minutes. So I didn't want to go eight minutes after what they'd said. And this is how they turned out. They weren't burnt but gee they were close to being and then I put the skewer in just to double check and it was clear when it came out so I took those ones out wiped down the pie maker with a paper towel just to get that excess sugar off and then batch number two I didn't put as much mixture in and I only put it on for five minutes before checking it and the front right one wasn't cooked perfectly so I just put it on again for another 30 seconds until the skewer came out clean I didn't really enjoy these, I must admit. I don't know if it was just the flavour that I decided to go with with the apple, if that's why I didn't really enjoy it that much. But I won't be making apple condensed milk muffins again. And the last batch I did for five minutes as well. So this was the first batch I did, nearly burnt. This was the second one. And the last one were the best by far. It's Portuguese tarts and Dave's making this. So those are the ingredients that he's using. In a bowl, he's putting one egg, one tablespoon of caster sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla paste. This is a real deal vanilla paste. Mixing that together before using half an orange zest and 120 grams of creme fraiche. And then mixing that all together, setting it aside before covering the puff pastry with cinnamon till it's completely covered. He had to wait until this had thawed. Then he rolled it completely up before cutting it in half down the middle and each half in half again. Then squashing each one down, putting it in the pie maker and fanning them out. So it's kind of like a bowl. Then he was gonna cook that for eight to 10 minutes. He ended up going with 10 minutes. Then he added in the custard mixture before doing another 10 minutes. Then he took those four out and repeated the same for the next four. When that was starting to happen over in a pan, he put five tablespoons of caster sugar, one orange squeezed in. And he stirred that for a minute or so to caramelize before 
pouring onto the Portuguese tarts. Now this was delicious, very sugary, but it's a recipe that would have been quicker to do in the ovens. But if we were just gonna do four next time, it'd be a great one to do in the pie maker. So first off, I'm gonna be making a classic chewy brownie. So last episode, I made the chocolate brownie from the greens packet mix that was on special for $2, which was an absolute bargain. Whereas today I'm doing it with the old gold chocolate. Now I don't use all the old gold chocolate, but it's enough that I'm glad I got it on special. So I used 125 grams of the dark chocolate. I'll link the recipe below. And then I used 125 grams of butter and put that into a saucepan and put that on the stove on low until it melted. While it was doing that, I cracked three eggs into a bowl and whisked them a little bit. The recipe actually said to put the chocolate and the butter in a heat proof bowl above simmering water. Um, but I've made something else where I didn't have to do that. So I thought, ah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Which is probably really bad for cooking. But what can I say? I'm getting confident. The more I cook, the more I'm just doing my own thing. I poured in a little bit of vanilla essence. And then sugar wise, it said one and a half cups of white sugar. I decided to do that, but it just seemed like a lot to me. And then I put in three quarters of a cup of plain flour and a little bit of cocoa on the top. The recipe also said a pinch of salt, but I decided not to do that. Once the butter and the chocolate were completely melted, then I poured that back in with the dry mixture and gave it a really good mix until it was completely combined. And then I'll show you what it looked like. So this is what it looked like at the end. Then I first put it on for seven minutes just to see how it went. And then I spooned it into each bowl and I filled it right up to the top. The top wasn't that crispy, so I put it on for another minute. But as you can see, the oil is really bubbling away and then still wasn't happy with it. So I put it on for another two minutes. So in total, it had 10 minutes before I got it out. Because of all the oil, I grabbed a paper towel and just cleaned out each pie hole before filling with another batch. Here you can see how much I collected. And then as you can see, I used most of the mixture, but just between making eight of them. And I put this in for eight minutes because after the first one, I always need less the next few times. But I ended up putting it in for 10 minutes and it still wasn't that great, as you can see here. And then I didn't want to waste the mixture, so I just put it in again for another eight minutes. I preferred the brownies packet mix rather than making them from scratch. So next time they're on special, I'm going to grab a few boxes. And I'm making fruit mince pies for the first time. I'm halfway through it. So the two ingredients I'm going to be using is these ready rolled short crust pastry. There's five sheets in that and then Robinson's traditional fruit mince. It's 410 grams and I just picked it up from Coles. We got the pastry out at brekkie time and then probably an hour later I reckon I got around to finally making these fruit mince pies. So just using the pie maker's pie cutter that comes with it and using the bigger circle for the bottoms and then the smaller circle for the tops. And what I found the best way to get the pastry off is just to pull around it. Now I decided that I was just going to do it this way because it was quicker and we we're expecting visitors but there is a technique that you can use so that you're using all the pastries so there's none of this waste. I've done it once before um, but I just didn't have time to worry about that today. <laughs> Then with this next one, I made four little slits for the bottom of the pastry just to fit inside the pie maker. And then I pushed it down on the edges. And then I repeated that for the four. And then I just spooned in these fruit mints. My goal was to make eight with the fruit mints. So I just roughly filled in each pie. My hubby's a big fan of fruit mince pies. You know, he loves buying them this time of the year. Um, and he said that this fruit mince from the jar actually tasted like the fruit mince that you get in the shop. So I thought that was a really good recommendation. Mm -hmm. 
then using the pie cutter again doing the smaller hole that's what I use for the lids so I just went around and did this on the pastry and then I actually thought I might put some little um, images on the top you know like you could do crosses or F's or M's or whatever but I just went into my drawer and I had three different cookie cutters I've got a whole container of Christmas cookie cutters but we've been using them downstairs to do some stamping and to make wrapping paper I'll show you what I've got here so just using the excess I just flattened it out as much as I could and here I've got an angel and I'm just pressing it in and I put that on top and I don't know on reflection now if that was the best idea because it just added more pastry to the top to try and cook. So the three cutters I had here was an angel, a teddy bear and a turkey. So I put them all on top and then I always put it into a cold pie maker. I tend to not worry about preheating it. Um, it just means that the first ones tend to be in longer. And then I put it on for eight minutes to start off with. I haven't used short crust pastry before, so I checked it and look, it looked okay but it definitely needs longer especially for the teddy on top so I put it on for another two minutes and then I checked it again and it hadn't really changed much in those two minutes so we went again for another two minutes and as you can see the um the teddy the angel and the turkey are all a little bit flat and they've sunken in to the pie um, so I put it on for another two minutes in total for the first one it ended up cooking for 18 minutes and it tasted okay, but the pastry underneath was well cooked, so probably too much. So the next time, the next four that I made, I just put them on for 12 minutes in the end, and they tasted great. I initially started with them for 10 minutes, and then I checked them, and they needed another two minutes. And then the first ones, I just sifted some icing sugar on the top, which made it look even more Christmassy, which looked really cool. And then I had one slice of short crust pastry left and I thought well what can I do with that and we had some frozen berries in the freezer so I just put the frozen berries in and then they ended up cooking for 12 minutes too and then I put icing sugar on top of them so it tasted great definitely give it a go if you've got any tips for using short crust pastry please put it in the comments below I know when I watch videos I check out the comments so share your knowledge and help other people out that'd be awesome oh my guys, I'm making three ingredient Christmas cake today I've had a look at a few recipes and so I'm going to be using orange juice as my liquid but I have seen chocolate milk iced coffee apple juice pineapple juice so there's lots of different options you can use and some people have even added in alcohol which i'm not going to do today because the whole family is going to eat these in all the recipes bar one that i looked at they suggested soaking the fruit overnight in the fridge so that's what i'm going to do the other one talked about doing it on the stove but i can't find it now so we're just partly doing it today so for this recipe i'm going to be using one kilo of mixed fruit this is just a packet from coles and two and a half cups of orange juice, so that's 600 mils. I did see somewhere that they just used two cups, but I do want mine to be extra moist. So I'm gonna do two and a half cups of the liquid, which is orange juice. And I'm gonna do this tomorrow, but I'll tell you about it now. Two cups of self-raising flour that's been sifted. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do now is put the mixed fruit and the orange juice into a bowl. So I totally recommend having a look in the comments below. As you know, this is the first time I do these recipes when I'm filming them, I'm trying out this pie maker. So all the awesome tips are below in the comments. So be sure to check them out and I hope you give this a bit of a go. I will say this mixed fruit had a lot of sultanas, like there was heaps and heaps. And I did use the full kilogram, but if I made this again, I wouldn't use it all. I found it really, really fruity especially the last batch I did, they had so much fruit in them. I'd love to know what you're making in your pie maker this Christmas. So once I had all the mixed fruit covered in the orange juice, then I just pressed it down as much as I could and then covered with cling wrap. I made sure the cling wrap was nice and firm, you know, like you could nearly bounce a ball off it. And then I put it in the fridge overnight. Then the next day I got it out and I began by sifting the flour. So two cups of flour sifted in this just Tupperware sifter that I've got, which is great for hand strength um, for myself as well as my two and a half year old. She likes to do the sifting. She's not today though. Then I sifted the flour into the mixed fruit and orange juice and mixed it as I went. I just did a little bit at a time. I found that was a lot easier to get the flour completely mixed in.
I'm using these cupcake liners to line the pie maker. I'm just going to put one in each one before adding in the mixture. As you can see here, I did the mixture up to the top of each one. I didn't do it above, just up to the top. The other reason why I used the cupcake liner is that I didn't want the fruit burning on the bottom or I just didn't want too much cleanup, I suppose. <laughs> And I've used it before when I made, I think it was orange and poppy seed muffins and it worked really well. So I know it works. It makes it so easy to eat afterwards as well. So I initially put it on for eight minutes to cook and then I checked it and I used a skewer to check in the middle. And as you can see here, it was still a little bit moist. So I put it on again for another two minutes and these came out perfect. As you can see, they're not too loaded with fruit and they're not burnt on the top. And then I repeated the process again for the next ones. I did it again for eight minutes because I thought being the second time and the pie maker already being hot that that would be enough, but it wasn't cooked in the middle. So I ended up doing 10 minutes. As I kept going, I ended up putting more and more mixture in and the last ones were just burnt. And the problem with putting too much mixture in is that you're at risk of burning the top and the bottom and then the middle being undercooked. I should have just had more excess mixture rather than trying to use it all up. So I ended up making 20 cupcakes from this mixture. And those were the last four that I did. And as you can see, they're just too brown for my liking. Um, so this is comparing the first one that I did and the last one. And you can actually see, I'll give you a side view of how much mixture I had in each one. Less is best with this recipe. And in the middle, it was nice and gooey and cooked. Thanks for watching. Bye.